All right. Welcome to the Anon Creds uh, working group meeting for the 22nd of January, 2024. Uh, we'll talk about the Anon Creds in W3C format um, project. So status updates and issues, and then move on to a couple of things to do with Anon Creds uh, V2 and the roadmap for Anon Creds. Um, we are recording the call and we'll be posting it after. Reminder, this is a Linux Foundation, Hyperledger Foundation meeting. So in, at every meeting, we have to remind members and participants of the Linux Foundation antitrust policy that's in effect and the Hyperledger code of conduct. Uh, let's be good to one another. Um, any, uh, so we have um, as far, a reminder that in the, um, specifications and related repositories. Um, we did get the um, 020 dev 7 release of an on-creds out there. It is the one that includes all of the update, the W3C updates. We have merged that into uh, the main branch of an on-creds, or, or at least we have a PR very close to that. Um, Took a bit of adjustment, um, not too much, but it wasn't just a, a switch of the um, uh, of the uh, implementation, and but it is now um, cleaned up, tests added, and so on. Um, meeting preliminaries, uh, welcome to all. Any introductions, any announcements people want to make? Timo, you want to mention that we now have a new wallet name on the block, Credo? Nicely done. Uh, yeah, we uh, we can do, yeah, we, we're going to do a formal update, but we have decided on a new name for uh, all right, framework JavaScript. It's yeah. it's Credo, Credo, uh, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, so now we're in the, in the process of uh, renaming everything. Yeah. And then uh, getting it ready for the zero five release uh, awesome. that we're going to do soon. Congratulations! How do you pronounce it? How do you want me to pronounce it? Well, it, it it's we don't have a singular pronunciation because it's different. In like Ariel pronounces it differently. Like I think a bit like Credo or Quedo or yeah. something like that. So uh, I say Quedo. I think. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Um, all right. As far as the NR credits in W3C format, um, I know we'll be um, likely merging the PR from um, uh, of the design on the Akapai side. Um, that's looking good. Any comments from the team there? And uh, I just updated. Uh, the PR with, with the hack empty version. So, yeah, it would be great to like, get the feel done. Excellent. Good. I saw the updates went through some of them. I need to do a little more work um, this afternoon. I want to make, or the later after this meeting, I mean, and um, get Ian to look at it as well, and then we'll move it forward. Excellent. Um, any. Questions or comments we want to act actually sorry Martin any comments from you on on the um, credo uh, implementation any any questions or comments or status you want to raise um no so far everything is looking good I'm uh, I am. Um... I created an implementation for the um, issuance attachment format, uh, which uh, was proposed from Timo. That's um, working, at least the issuance part, or at least the anon creds part. I did not do a lot of tests with issuing non anon creds credential or yeah. um, with the, the other data integrity proofs. Um, yeah, and I'm currently working on, on making the percent proof protocol working with the PAX attachment format. Um, so, yeah, but so far, so good. Excellent. Good. Thank you. All right. Um, if there's no questions or comments from the teams on this further, um, 
I'll jump into a brief presentation I'd done on an on credits V2 object. So um so we'll shift from an on credits in W3C. Oh, Timo, yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe one on this topic. I don't know how far the Akapai team is with their implementation exactly, but might be good like if in a week or something, uh uh we could to start doing a bit of like interoperability uh, testing or probably better to do that sooner or later, but I don't know how far the implementation is uh, yeah. um, is along um, and if it's time to to start looking at that. Probably early right now, but one of the things we could start to do is plan out um, how to do it at next, at next Monday's meeting, maybe, um, Martin, you could say, okay, here's how you would be able to run the code you've done. In other words, where you published it. Presumably, you have your own, um, your own fork of uh, of what you're working on, and and then we could um, see how to how to use it, interact with it. Uh, yeah, I have my own fork. I can try to to make something. Yeah. Okay. So that can run it. Yeah, just brief instructions for how to run it. Although um, that's you know just anything that needs to change as a result of what you're doing. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. And Tuna, you should keep that in mind as well as you start to move forward in the implementation. Um, uh, what fork you're using and how to spin it up so that um, others can see it. So ideally, as you're working, you're not keeping it locally but pushing it out to your um, GitHub repository regularly um, so we can um, access it. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah, I know that. Good, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, moving on. So um, one of the things that um, we've got happening in, in Enterprise V2 is um, the first PR came in, which was, uh, uh, a, a, an item done by a team in uh, the University of Toronto, which is where I went to school, interestingly. And uh, they contacted me uh, a bit to do a, a small project in there, and they've done some work towards um, an on-creds V2 and W3C format. And the first thing we needed to do was sort of see what the objects looked like today as far as um, that. So they've added some debugging and, and work in it. So Status, um, background on an on-creds V2, same operations and objects as an on-creds V1. So we should have more or less the same offer request issue in a uh, on issuance, the same presentation request um, presentation in, in presenting, and obviously a credential and a presentation are, are obvious, but we also have the um, cred def and the schema. Um, the main difference um, from a, a from an external perspective is significantly more information about the schema claims. So there is a ton more information in the um, schema than is today. And and as as those who have looked at it know, um, there is almost no information. All there is is a list of attribute names in the schema. And then by looking at the data we determine what the encoding is. So in an on-creds V1, there's basically nothing. In on-creds V2, um, we get all sorts of information about um, what the encoding is. Is it a, a hashed, which is a string in, in V1, a number, which is a number in V1, and then we get these additional ones, scalar, which is currently only the link secret in V1. Now, um, an issuer can create a scalar for using for multiple things. It can be a set, so we can do set membership and we can have a range enabling a range proof. So all of those, um, that encoding information becomes um, explicit versus implicit as it is in V1. Um, as a result, with more data, we get more flexibility and we get more capability. So the main flexibility is we are able to use multiple underlying signatures. CL signatures is actually included in this, but I never included in a presentation. Um, but CL signatures could also be supported, but um, 
Paul Chevalier Sanders PS signatures is available. BS plus BBS plus signatures would, is is um, possible, and um, PS post quantum are available as well, which is quite interesting. Um, PS post quantum is just a pluggable version of the PS signatures, and um, but is the first one that sort of gives us the possibility of of um, a post quantum implementation. So that's the flexibility. The capabilities is ma mainly the additional ZKP capabilities. So we still get selective disclosure. We still get um, predicates. We now get um, claim equality across credentials um, without revealing the claim value. So you can do a comparison of say names across two different credentials without revealing the name itself, just proving that it's the same. Um, set membership. So, um, you know, if you want to have the 20 EU countries, you can show that they are within a certain, you know, a handful of them and, and prove that without saying where the person is. Um, a range proof, um, blinded value, a range proof, obviously a, a range of values, blinded um, being similar to a link secret, but able to be used um, in different circumstances. And then super interesting one, verifiable encryption. Um, so a, a, a value that can be verified as, as being um, uh, provided, but, but can be encrypted with a given key. So this is what um, similar to what uh, credit card companies do when they generate an on-the-fly um, um, credit card number for you. And then when it gets back to the issuer of the credit card, they can decrypt it and determine who made the purchase. So all of those capabilities become available. There's one more, which is a domain proof. Um, I'll add that to this list. So um, as a reminder, a domain proof is where um, on, re on repeated presentations to the same domain, um, to the same verifier, the verifier can use a, uh, a common value and get back a, uh, a, a repeated value from the credential uh, in the presentation. So they get a consistent value from the presentation, but each verifier gets a different one. So they can't do correlation across verifiers, but when somebody returns uh, and presents the same credential, it's recognized as being the same credential. So that's uh, another interesting one. Um, implemented as part of an OnCreds 2 is the Allosaur re revocation capability, and that has um, very interesting properties, super scalable. It basically has unlimited scalability, um, but has um, would likely be implemented as a type of call home capability. So it's got some pluses and minuses there, but um, we've got some ideas on how that call home can be um, mitigated and so that it doesn't become a either a perceived or real um, tracking mechanism. So um, that's where we are with the non-creds too and what's there. There is code, um, it's available, and we've got a to-do list of things we wanna do most uh, importantly, starting with making the signatures pluggable. Uh, currently it has PS signatures built in, but we wanna make it pluggable and then BBS Plus added as soon as possible. And that's just because BBS Plus has more momentum in the VC marketplace. We also would be super interested in getting a team interested in um, experimenting with the post-quantum capabilities. Um, we do want to formalize the objects with an OnCreds 1.0 features built in so that the link secret is automatic, just as it is in V1. Um, we get the W3C VCDM format. We get the diff presentation exchange format so that we're building right from the beginning off of those. Um, date and date time encodings is, is an addition we want to put in right away so that you can have um, user-friendly um, date and date time encodings, but they get converted into, for instance, the... Um, date integer format we're using for dates in an OnCreds V1 and the Unix time we're using for V2. Um, currently, there's a couple of tests, an issue and an issue present. And so Victor Wong of uh, Wong of University of Toronto 
has put in a couple of things to enable um, printing out of those objects. And so if you run with Rust log and then create creates test, you can actually see all the objects. And that's what I was after to be able to show some things. So um, we do have, um, so I put these into our repo so we can start to see what a, a credential schema looks like. Um, hopefully you can see that. Um, let's see, I think that would make it a little bigger. Um, so this would be the entire V1 schema you would get. Um, link secret would be missing because it would be implicitly created, but you would just have the list of names. And so here we get um, much more information. Um, we can have multiple blinded claims. And so that um, is enabled that, that you can put more into it. And then this is what I meant by you have more information available. So for things like the name, you've got uh, a length, um, um here you've got you know the type is revocation scalar hashed so you're being very explicit about about the type here you've got a number you've got a range on it um you've got a length on the string so you've got validators which allow you to um indicate attributes of those and so this is the the additional information that comes with um a, a schema in an OnCreds V2. Um, there is an example with and without. Um, there, I have done the diff, they're not very different. Um, so uh, there's that. Um, there is two calls depending on which one you're using. Um, and so I have questions for, for Mike Lauder as to why there is um, two calls. There is a call that says I'm blinded, I'm sending a blinded, and there's a call that says I'm not sending a blinded, and I'm wondering why that is. So part of the ex effort in doing this was to come up with questions and differences. There also does not seem to be the equivalent printed and available in the uh, of the credential definition object. I think I've gone through the test now and found where that should have been printed, and so I'm, I'm looking at getting that printed out so I can take a look at what that looks like. Um, the credentials are kind of interesting. Um, for one, as they are today, um, the credential, I'll, I'll start with the credential with the link secret. Yeah, there it is. Um, notice that in it is explicitly the entire schema object. So this needs to change to being an identifier and um, referencing the schema itself. So this goes away entirely, um, that entire claim type. We do have the cryptography in here. So we've got verifying key blinding um, revocations in here. So um, those would obviously go into the proof um, in W3C format. And finally, we've got the credential, which gets down to um address and the value <laughs> so um you know in w3c format obviously this will become the sub the subject um credential and the various values within it we will think about what the id will be um, revocation is interesting i do want to talk about how we can do revocation such that we can support both um the bit array format and um, revocation with um, Alasor in the same way. And I think that is doable, um, but we're going to take a look at that. And finally, some additional um, values related to the signature. So this format obviously needs to become um, in line with W3C format, but it does not look difficult um, to do that using essentially the same strategies we've used in an on v1. So quite pleased with that. Um, it, it's interesting that there's a difference. I think it's a bug, but I'm checking with, with Mike on that. Um, in the no link secret, um, for some reason, the the name of the claims is not included, but in the with link secret, 
um, the label is included. So I'm not quite sure why that is, but presumably that's just a bug in the implementation. But I'll find out that. Um, obviously we need to publish the schema so it can be left out. There's no reference in the tests today and the objects we're printing out to where the revocation update for Alisor comes from. Um, that without going too deep into it with Alice or what the holder does is they request an update to their witness, uh, a value they hold, and then um, they use that in creating the presentation. And so much like the holder has to get a uh, the deltas or, or the status of the credential in V1, they have to get an update in Alice or for V2. Um, the, Obviously, the holder needs to know where to get that, and that's not provided in um, the information now. Um, presentation schema. This is an odd object that I've been thinking about um, last couple of days as as um, we've gone uh, as I've gone through this. Um, I call it a presentation request, but that's not right. It's the schema. Um, it is what is being asked for, but what's so the idea in an Arcrez V2 is um, basically a, a it's, it's much like um, diff presentation exchange, a, uh, a, a verifier requests for a single credential, the, the attributes they want out of it, the, the information they want from each credential. And then at a higher level, um, multiple credentials can be asked for and so on. And so, um, this is saying here are the claims in the in what's called the presentation schema. Um, uh, so it more formalizes the idea that there is a schema associated with a presentation um, and the holder processes that schema to determine what their presentation is going to actually look like. So here um, there's a schema, much like on the um, issuance side of what's being asked for. Now, this is what's throwing me off is there's, this is the actual, um, looks to be the, the credential itself that's being passed in. And I think what this is, is this is the information that the holder assembles in order to generate, generate the presentation. So I think this is all of the various information that's provided within the holder themselves in order to produce a presentation. And this is the actual presentation. It shows the um, various values related to the proof of knowledge for a signature. So those are the number. So this is revealed, uh, revealing attributes for the revocation. Interestingly, even though there's no verifiable encryption or membership involved in this, um, that information is provided in this presentation, and I'm not sure why that is. In this play, in this particular presentation, the only thing we're doing is disclosing one of the fields. Um, so even though we're not doing these other things, um, the values are included. And again, this is a, a session I haven't held with Mike yet. I was hoping he was going to make the call today, but he's flying right now. Um, so we could go over those things, but. Um, um, we don't have a presentation request included in the printouts yet, so I'm going to get that hopefully this week and be able to look through it. Um, but as I mentioned, the current model is uh, like diff presentation exchange. There's presentation statements, which reference the claims in a single credential that the verifier wants proven. And then those can be combined. Those sets of statements can be combined into a higher level um, um, into a presentation schema. Um, and finally, as I mentioned, uh, I've gone through this already, the presentation itself, um, the, uh, noting the items that are always there. Um, the one thing I did not see at all was the equivalent of the aggregate proof. Um, so proving that um, something comes from the same link secret. And I do have to talk to Mike on that because I don't see that. And I think that is a concept that would need to be added to this to, to be able to show that if you're going to present, uh, provide a presentation 
based on a set of credentials um, that they would be, um, uh, they would all come from the same link secret. So I don't know if anyone has any questions on that, but I wanted to go through that. All right. The last thing um, I had, and again, this, okay, Timo, yeah. Um, yeah, I have a few questions on, on like um, um, some of the features it supports. Um, well, it, um, because I saw that the claims were um, an array structure with, with claim names, um, will it natively support like nested structures and also like arrays and, and these kind of things? Yeah. Um, I believe... I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, I've had I've had several conversations where we've talked a bit about that, and I've got uh, I've, my recollection is I've received conflicting information about that as to whether um, the arrays are um, would be supported. I think uh, nested would be easy <laughs> in that. I mean, all you really need to do is flatten it out. That's what that's what happens today um, in uh, like BBS plus and the other ones is it all gets flattened into a flat array uh, or a, a, a flat list. And so that's easy enough done with um, what I don't know is whether an array would be supported and whether possible. My understanding is it could be, um, but, um, and, and for use with generic W3C credentials where, where, you know, we've currently we have a limitation that um, in in W3C format and non-creds V1, you have to, it has to be a non-creds format first, W3C second with the credential subject completely flat. So we're aware of that. Um, I I pretty, sh I think we can get there, but I, I have to talk to Mike to um, get his take on it and how we would do it. I think that might be a bit the tricky one. What the, the the big thing I see about that is how one expresses the the presentation request. Uh, presumably, you know, if you have an array, um, how you would say I want the you know prove to me the third item in your array is is complicated. My guess is you would do something like say, um, show me the third and you know the this value and this value out of this array and you would show all of them in the array. I don't know. Um, it, th it, that seems to be to me the most complicated is how you figure out how to how to request information where you have arrays. Um, super difficult, yeah. I think in in W3C because they flatten everything out into a, a, the end quads. Yeah, I think with with arrays, I think with with diff presentation exchange, you can, for example, uh, using the JSON schema syntax, you can, for example, say this field needs to be an array that contains the value uh, Stephen. Um, and so, if I would satisfy that with limit disclosure, I would disclose only the uh, property Stephen in that array. Um, okay. I know in BBS they. Did, I think they supported arrays um, also, but a, a problem was raised. Um, I think that you could see how many entries there would be in arrays. And um, I think that that was a problem. Um, but I think, yeah, we could always define it higher level a way to do nested um, structures. But I think it would be good to include that um, as like, if okay. we were going to create like, this is how you, Define Anocred V two with do three C credentials or or whatever that that we support. I think that is a, um, yeah, a very nice feature to have. Yeah, uh, I know in in with CL signatures there is a cryptographic value per item, and that makes arrays essentially impossible. I believe that goes away with um, these other signature schemes, but. Again, that's where you know my knowledge at 
of the cryptography, the underlying cryptography is 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 limited. Um, I'll take that as yeah. a, okay. a key question to talk to um, to Mike about. Okay, and uh, another question is: um, I think link secrets have been um, like sometimes we said that like it's it's a bit hard to um, like they they're not always really secure because you always generate them software based and then you share them. Um, is that a thing that Anfetch V two is going to try to solve for? Like, I don't think so. I don't think there's a way to solve that. Um, and so it becomes a security privacy trade-off. Um, I don't know of a way to solve it. I've, I've <laughs> spent some time and thought I was on the edge of coming up with a way, but, um, I don't know of a way to do it. I don't know that there is a way, um, as soon as you force going to a hardware based, um, key you you are by definition requiring a unique identifier and therefore you're you're losing the unlinkability um so that's going to be a challenge i don't know quite the answer to that okay all right Last thing I wanted to bring up at, at this meeting was to go over the um, quickly the um, annual report. Um, so I have put together an annual report as a draft and published out. Um, hopefully people saw that on the Discord channel and the email. Um, there is a um, requirement from the Hyperledger TOC to, to put together an annual report. Um, so that's what this is about covers the metrics for the past year, the diversity, um, adoption of uh, a non-cred. So this talks about, um, you know, the different formats, some of the things, Timo, you just mentioned with the, um, the why it might not be, um, the push away from tying it directly to an indie ledger and things like that for pushing it forward. Um, updates uh, to prior things we tried to accomplish. And then finally, they, the goals. Um, big one being what we're, what a lot of the folks on this call are working on, which is the W3C format completion. Um, and this is just a formality completion of that spec, but but moving the, the V2 forward and getting into a lot of the things that we're talking about um, we just went over as part of this. So um, that is what's been put together. I encourage everyone um, who's interested to go through this to provide any comments or updates. And then um, we will shortly be presenting this at an upcoming W3 or uh, TOC meeting, uh, Hyperledger TOC meeting. That is all I have for this meeting. Is any uh, comments, questions from anyone on any other topics or anything else you want to raise? All right. Well, thanks all. Have a great week. It's a very short week for me, so I'm going to have a great one. Extended weekend. See you, folks. See you. Enjoy. Thank you.